Hi, everyone. We're going to get started now. Um, so before we start our presentation, I was wondering if we could just do a quick um, sound check. So if a few people could uh, type in and just let us know if you can hear us OK, that will be great. And if there's any audio issues, we'll try and address them. OK, so it looks like most people can hear us. Um, just a couple of things before we get started. Uh, for anyone who is calling in using their teleconference line, just be aware that um, the, the Adobe Connect doesn't put you on mute automatically, so you have to manually mute yourself. Otherwise, we will be able to hear some background noises, and, and it's pretty disruptive for our presenters. So uh, yeah, please make sure that you're on mute. Um, a few things about our presentation today. The webinar will be recorded. So um, we'll be sending out the presentation slides as well as a link to the recording after the presentation. Um, we'll also be sending out a link to an evaluation survey. So we'll ask that you can fill that out for us and just give us some feedback on today's webinar so we can uh, plan our webinars a little bit better in the future. Um, we'll also be having uh, doing a little Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to type them into the chat box during during the webinar, and we'll try to get to as many as we can at the end. OK, so we can get started now. So welcome, everyone, to the HSJCC webinar, uh, reflecting on the work of the HSJCC network over the past year. Uh, my name is Tasha Rennie, and I am the Network Engagement and Communications Officer with the HSJCC Secretariat. And I'm joined today by the rest of my team at the HSJCC Secretariat. So we're going to do a little uh, roundtable introduction. Um, so who would like to start? Uh, I'll go for it. Uh, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Samuel. I'm the project manager with the HSJC Secretariat. Uh, and I've had the good fortune of being with the Secretariat since its inception in 2015. Really looking forward to giving you a good overview of the network and everything we've accomplished over the past year. Thanks, Joseph. My name is Christine Conrad, and I'm a policy analyst at CMHA Ontario. Uh, on the justice file, and I provide policy support to the provincial HSJCC and support the secretariat. Uh, and I've been in this role for a little over a year now. Great. Thanks, Christine. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Candace Benna. I've been with the secretariat for almost two years now. Um, as a network coordinator, I provide overall administrative support and coordination to the provincial table, but also providing uh, operational support to our regional and local committees, and kind of act as the first point of contact for the network. Uh, looking forward to discussing uh, the past year with you all. Excellent. Um, and as I said, I provide a member engagement and communication support to the network. Um, I've also been in my role for just under two years, and uh, you will probably recognize me from some of our webinars. My role involves coordinating the webinars as well as other communications and engagement activities. So for today's presentation, um, we're going to be providing a bit of an overview about the HSJCC network. We're going to talk about our priority setting activity uh, from the past year. We're going to reflect on some of the accomplishments of the network from the past year, talking a bit about uh, some highlights from local and regional committees, as well as provincial HSJCC projects, as well as um, reflecting on our communications, knowledge exchange, and member engagement activities. And then we'll have some time for Q&A. So I'm going to pass it over to Joseph. Thanks, Tasha. So I thought I'd kick things off today um, by giving everyone a rather brief overview of the HSJCC network. Um, for members who have been part of the network for a while, this might come as very familiar information. Um, but for those of you who are a bit newer to the work, uh, it might be helpful just to learn a little bit more um, and just get refreshed on the work that we do. Um, so at a glance, um, the HSJCC network is about uh, just over 20 years old. Um, it was created by an act of provincial legislation in 1997. Um, and the goal of the legislation really was to reduce silos and really get at the problem of, criminal, of the criminalization of persons with special needs. So the HSJCC network um, was really designed as a network of committees. Um, they could help sort of coordinate uh, services and resources for special populations who come into contact with the law and really get at that, you know, sort of root cause of criminalization of certain focused populate, uh, populations. HSJCCs uh, work at a number of levels. Um, so we have HSJCCs at the local, regional, and provincial level. 
And what they all do is provide education and training for their many members um, and coordinate care for individuals and work to address uh, systemic issues. And members of the HSJPC network come from across the spectrum of human services and justice uh, sectors. Um, they're all voluntary collaborations and made up of over 1,600 uh, professionals uh, from across the province. To look a little bit deeper at our membership, you can really sort of see that um, they do represent all sort of the pertinent sectors uh, of professionals working to address this issue of criminalization for uh, focused populations. Um, so briefly, this isn't exclusive, but our members uh, contain members, uh, sorry, contain representatives from municipal and provincial police, uh, lawyers, Crown, duty counsel and court support, probation and parole services, reintegration services and housing providers, uh, members from the healthcare sector, specifically perhaps from forensic services, and pharmacies, members from correctional services, members from special populations agencies, um, specifically fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, who diagnose it, and brain injuries, members from community mental health and addictions organizations, um, and many more. This isn't by any means an exhaustive list, but it does give you a sort of flavor for just how representative our members are um, of these various sectors. HSJTC's work across the province, um, from Sonora to uh, Cornwall to Windsor, at these various levels that I spoke about before. Locally, we have 39 HSJTCs um, whose focus is on education and training for their members and really looking at local issues that pertain to these special populations. So their focus is really around care coordination for these individuals at all, at all points across sort of the justice journey. Um, so that involves, you know, not only avoiding contact with the justice system in the first place, but also looking at care coordination at the pre-charge, post-charge, court process, during the court process, and in release and discharge planning. Our 14 regional HSJCCs also look at education and training for their members, but take a little bit of a step back from the local level to look at what sort of regional system change initiatives take in effect. The provincial HSJTC looks at the province as a whole, uh, is responsible for education and training of all members of the network, and really is focused on sort of enacting systemic change um, at a provincial level through policy projects um, and other initiatives. To go into a little more detail around the provincial HSJTC, um, it does a lot of things. Uh, it tries to support the individual and collective efforts of regional and local HSJCC to really act as the voice for the network and make sure that these regional and local needs and interests are represented at the provincial level. It identifies provincial service and policy issues and makes recommendations to make sure that we're really affecting change um, and speaking to the agencies and bodies that have the power to affect this change at the provincial level. It also identifies solutions to systemic problems and promotes a consistency of approach across Ontario while recognizing regional diversity. It really sees sort of its leverage as making sure that our members have access to the best information, knowledge, um, and solutions to the clients that they serve. To dig a little bit deeper into the membership, it really is reflective of the network as a whole and all the important players that are involved in these issues. Its voting members contain regional representatives, um, so that's all those regional HSJCCs that work across the province. Um, it also has provincial co-chairs with one representative representing the human service sector and another representing the justice sector. We also have a number of ex officio members to make sure that we really are well represented, represented um, and informed of these important issues. So we contain representatives, the provincial HSJCC contains representatives from each of its partner ministries which include the Ministry of Health, which is the main funder, the Attorney General, the Solicitor General, Children and, Commun Children and Community and Social Services, and federal representation from Correctional Services Canada. In addition to those government partners, we have a number of other SSCO members that really do make sure that we're as well informed and representative as possible. A special shout out to our new members who are joining in the fall of the John Howard Society of Ontario and Justice for Children and Youth. Again, complementing that provincial perspective on these human services and justice issues. I want to share with you a little bit more information about the HSJPC Secretary. As I mentioned, um, I'm kind of an old school member of the Secretary here. Um, it started in 2015 with funding from the Ministry of Health, and it really represented an evolution for the HSJPC network because the Secretariat were, uh, are a permanent um, staff 
mean that really make sure the work of the HSJCP network um, is supported and leveraged um, and continues uh, as best as it can. Of course, all our members are voluntary and coming from different organizations and sectors, and we really try and make sure that their time and resources and energy are leveraged as much as possible. How is the CMHA Ontario? Um, more specifically, we really do try and make sure that the objectives and work plan of the provincial HSJCC are completed and moved forward, and that the HSJCC network infrastructure is really supported as much as possible. I want to take a little time to talk about um, some important events that happened uh, with the provincial HSJCC over the past year. Um, in September, um, again, the Secretary had uh, its three-year anniversary, and this kind of represented a moment for the provincial HSJCC to really reflect on where it's come from and where it's going. And so in September 2018, we held a visioning day um, where all the members of the provincial HSJCC were present and really try to revisit their objectives and overall purpose. They also want to articulate what the provincial HSJCC's role was within the HSJCC network as a whole and the broader human services and justice sector. They also identified their strengths, um, any challenges, and how they could best move forward. And what they came up with was a reaffirmation of why they existed and what they do well and want to continue doing well. So no surprises, you know, the main mandate of the provincial HSJCC is really to help these populations with unique needs who are at risk of coming into conflict with the law. They really see themselves as advocates for these populations um, that can inform government policy and support the HSJCC network um, in its work around these issues. Concluding the day, they really felt that what they had to do moving forward to best leverage the work of the network um, was simplify and clarify their objectives better monitor their progress, and celebrate their many successes. They also wanted to make sure that in this new, ever-changing environment, um, that they were advocating at the provincial level for the network uh, as effectively as possible. With that in mind, they're trying to develop a more strategic approach to government relations and provincial policy work, and really see how the Secretariat can best be leveraged in the future to improve connections across the network and with our partner organizations, and make sure our resources are as available as possible to members of the network. Following the Vision Day in September 2018, uh, in the winter of 2019, the provincial HSJCC was able to establish its top priorities for the next three years. And this was really a comprehensive effort to make sure that its work was well informed by the broader HSJCC network. And these priorities were developed with the input of um, the network as a whole. And this gives you sort of a flavor um, of what is driving the provincial HSJCC forward in the next couple of years. And I think you'll see it represented in all the policy work, um, all the knowledge exchange work, and all the administrative support we provide as well, and that my colleagues are going to talk about next. But just very quickly, the top priorities of the provincial HSJCC has going forward are number one, support of an affordable housing, number two, release from custody and discharge issues, number three, cross sector collaboration and cooperation issues. Number four, complex and compliance. Number five, emerging trends and substance use issues, including response to the opioid crisis and its legalization and expansion of alcohol sales. Number six is a focus on specialized populations, including seniors, youth, uh, racialized, and indigenous populations. Number seven, uh, resourcing issues relating to funding, staffing, and programming. And number eight, membership and engagement. And again, my colleagues are going to refer to these top priorities when they're talking about the work that we're doing currently and in the future. Um, and with that said, I think I will turn it over to Candace. Great. Thank you, Joseph, so much for that introduction and overview of the network. So today I'd like to provide you with an overview of some of the work over the past year and highlight some of our successes. Um, but before getting into that, I'd like to start by providing an overview of the HSJCC's work planning and reporting uh, cycle and process across the network. Um, so as many of you uh, know, work planning and reporting is uh, nothing new to the network. We've been doing this for uh, several years now. Um, the provincial, uh, regional, and local committees are each responsible for developing uh, their work plans, which outline their planned activities and anticipated outcomes for the fiscal year ahead. Uh, the provincial tabled work plan uh, works in three-year cycles, where the regional and local develop annual work plans. Uh, work planning is really important, as it, it not only assists HSJCCs in addressing their priorities by mapping out their activities, 
but they also keep everyone well informed of what is happening at the provincial, regional, and local levels, which increases the level of knowledge of our available services and linkages and opportunities for collaboration. Um, also, every year, committees report on their actual outputs and outcomes from the previous fiscal year in the form of annual reports. Reporting is such an important piece as it not only ensures there's accountability uh, across the network and um, between committees, but also ensures that we're accountable to our funders. So at the provincial level, we report directly uh, to the Ministry of Health, and at the regional and local level, their work is reported directly um, to the LIN. And of course, reporting is a great way to highlight our accomplishments and celebrate the impact of our work across the network. Um, I encourage any regional and local chairs who may have questions about uh, work planning and reporting um, to contact me. So I'd now like to reflect on some of the accomplishments of the regional and local HSJCCs this past year. And of course, this is just a snapshot of some of the amazing work that's being done across the network. I'd like to recognize all the amazing work being done, um, some of which includes hosting knowledge exchange events, providing training and education opportunities, direct services, and information management. By sharing and celebrating these successes, we really hope to inspire committees and to highlight uh, opportunities for support and collaboration within the network. So starting off first with the Northwest Center of Responsibility, uh, last year they supported the successful launch of three situation tables in the communities of the District of Thunder Bay. Um, and very exciting, their local Thunder Bay Situation Table was the recipient of the City of Thunder Bay's Mayor Community Safety Award in Outstanding Community Project category. So that was an amazing accomplishment. Um, similar to the Provincial Table, the Corps also hosted their own priority setting day uh, where they had over 30 senior leaders throughout the Northwest at 10th, um, which led to the identification of key priorities for their upcoming uh, fiscal year. Uh, as well, the four hosted a day of learning uh, with Dr. Joanne Bees, who provided a day-long workshop on preventing psychological stress and injury in the workplace, and they had over 150 people from the human services and justice sector attend in the Northwest region. So now looking on to a, a local committee in, in the Northwest, Nora Rainy River District also had a really exciting year. The committee updated their inventory on mental health and addiction services in the Northwest First Nation communities. The committee is currently working uh, with Connex Ontario to develop an inventory in their system that is um, open to all of the, the committee members to be able to access contact information related to nursing, nursing stations within Northwest Ontario and treatment centers available in First Nations communities. That's very exciting. Um, they also updated their criminal justice navigation map for both the youth and adult um, systems. Um, so organizations can help assist uh, individuals um, with resources uh, through various juncture points within their journey in the justice system. Uh, also, they hosted their annual risk forum where the table presented um, an annual report for acutely elevated cases. Uh, their steering committee has now identified trends from this report that are going to be discussed for action moving forward. So in Toronto, um, they had quite the busy and exciting year as well. Some highlights from this committee include their regional working in collaboration with the Justice uh, Collaborative, PSSP, CAMH, and the Complex Care Subcommittee to build and support the service resolution Toronto process for uh, individuals with complex needs. Uh, in addition, the committee really focused on ways to scale up system level issues as they relate to the social determinants of health, so poor housing status, poverty, isolation, access to services, et cetera. Um, this year, they decided to conduct a survey to determine the scope and, and impact of a fee for medical file transfer in the context of the population that their HSJCC uh, works with. At the local level um, in Toronto, a lot of the locals held uh, various events, including Lunch and Learn, to build cross-sectoral collaboration and networking to kind of sustain the HSJCC capacity. The downtown committee, in particular, um, decided to explore a new consultation-style Lunch and Learn, so giving participants the opportunity to bring case scenarios and questions and situations to the table that could be explored using trauma-informed principles. 
So York South Simcoe Regional Committee um, held a very vibrant and successful event this year on the impact of opioids in York Region and South Simcoe. They had over 100 uh, attendees at the event as well as an MPP from Brampton uh, North. The primary goal of this event was to really increase the awareness of people and the issues related to opioids and the criminal justice system. So congratulations to them. It was a very successful event. Um, in the southeast, uh, Lanark Local HSJCC um, held their two-day training at the implementation of their lead team protocol and training. They had over 80 frontline responders attend this event, which was very successful. Um, oftentimes, committees will form subcommittees uh, within their group to address specialized issues. Lander Committee has an active youth at-risk committee where groups will um, offer collaboration between organizations. Moving to the Simcoe Muskoka Network Committee, um, this year Simcoe Muskoka decided um, to have all of their locals meet with their regionals to form a network committee um, to kind of cut down on the number of meetings and best, have the best use of time. Um, so the regional committee this year printed 150 uh, booklets on their journey to the justice system, which is a great resource for the Simcoe Muskoka area. Um, the locals were also involved in a number of exciting projects. So Midland filled 50 backpacks for their North Simcoe Mobile Crisis Intervention Team. Aurelia hosted a lunch and learn. Barry distributed um, some transit tickets. And Collingwood hosted uh, guest speaker Joe Roberts at an event. And finally, um, the Peel Regional Committee uh, created and distributed their fam family navigation tools for mental health and addiction courts and the justice system. So this tool really aims to increase capacity and understanding of clients and families under entering the court system and increase, increase satisfaction for families relating to the court system. Um, the tool was released and an initial 500 copies were printed for the Branton and Peel Police as well as 250 copies for the Caledon and Dufferin OPP. Uh, the brochures have been successful and been uh, distributed quickly throughout their community. Uh, lastly, they also were able to support some training for police officers on the standard operating procedures and referral processes of their new uh, Caledon pre-charge diversion program. So now that I've uh, kind of went over some accomplishments of the network, uh, I'd like to focus on the provincial HSGCC's work from the past year. It's been quite the exciting and, and busy year for the table as we now embark on our three-year uh, three work plan. As Joseph mentioned previously, the, in September, the table engaged in the visioning exercise with the purpose of uh, refining our vision, mission, and goals for the provincial table. The results of this exercise really helped to paint a clear picture of our collective purpose and uh, complemented the HSJCC network-wide priority setting exercise that we completed in the winter. Uh, in January, the results of this exercise were used to help guide the development of our new provincial three-year work plan. Um, the provincial HSJCC held three issue management sessions this year. So these are focused sessions during meetings that involve a discussion on an HSJCC priority. Uh, members will learn more about some system challenges and promising practices and solutions for addressing these challenges. Um, so as we welcome the new provincial government this year, the table held an issue management session on the potential impact of the provincial election on the work of the HSJCC. Uh, we also held a session on the issue of information flow between uh, the courts as well as in corrections. And we invited Justice David Cole, who is Ontario's independent reviewer, to come and speak to this issue. Um, as always, um, the provincial table remains engaged with our health and justice ministry partners and often participates in ongoing consultations, uh, some of which included the Ministry of the Solicitor General on the discharge from the district court protocol, as well as the correctional health care, um, and the Ministry of the Attorney General on community justice centers. Uh, in addition to this, the provincial table also heard uh, various educational presentations from our stakeholders that align with our ongoing priorities. So some of these uh, presentations address issues surrounding supportive housing for those with mental health and addictions issues who are involved in the justice system, 
older adults in the justice system, and um, community well-being and safety planning across the province. So here are some highlights from the provincial HSJCC's communication and knowledge exchange work. This is a really big part of our work. Um, the Secretary has helped to support and facilitate a number of these activities. Uh, Tasha will be speaking more about this later. Um, however, I just wanted to uh, show you some of the outputs from our work this year. For anyone who's interested in accessing any of the webinars, past newsletters, um, finding more resources on the website, please um, visit our website to find all of that information. We post everything there. Um, and with that, I'd like to turn it over to Christine to talk about some of the provincial projects. Thanks, Candice. All right, I'll just go through uh, a few projects that uh, DHSJCC has been involved with provincially over the past year, starting with older adults and the justice system. So this project really started at the local and regional level. HSJCC network members raised the problem they were seeing in their local courthouses uh, with their local and regional committees. Uh, they noticed that older adults, including those with dementia, were increasingly becoming involved in the justice system. So these issues uh, made their way up to the provincial table, and the HSJCC network identified older adults in the justice system during the 2015 priority setting exercise. A project advisory committee was struck, uh, composed of uh, broad expertise uh, on this issue, to guide the next phase of the project. The objectives are to identify key issues impacting this population, generate solutions, and create a navigational guidebook, uh, which will be coming out soon. Uh, older adults were identified again as a key item of interest during our 2019 priority setting exercise. Uh, this project also relates to uh, other priorities, such as release from custody and housing, and of course, cross-sectoral collaboration. Uh, so this is a, an issue that the provincial HSJCC will continue to monitor and be involved with, um, and we'll be presenting at the 2019 provincial HSJCC conference. Another provincial project uh, is Sweet Hospital Transition. This project began in 2012, uh, examining how persons apprehended by police under the Mental Health Act were transferred to hospital emergency departments. And the goals were to decrease hospital wait times and to improve client experiences and make better use of resources. A framework and toolkit were developed based on existing best practices in Ontario. In June of this year, the ministries of the Solicitor General and Health jointly endorsed the framework and toolkit at a provincial education forum. And just last week, on August 9th, uh, the Minister of Health, Solicitor General, and Associate Minister of Mental Health and Addiction publicly announced the new framework and toolkit. This project is a true example of cross-sectoral collaboration and co cooperation. It really demonstrates the HSGCC's ability to convene broad partners, including hospitals, police, new ministries, mental health agencies, and persons with lived experience. It shows that the HSDCC is seen as a reliable partner and leader, able to bring about change and improve outcomes for our clients. So this is a real success for us this year. Communities of interest are supported by the Evidence Exchange Network out of the Center for Addiction and Mental Health. And the HSDCC has been a key partner in multiple COIs, including housing, health, and justice. This COI was formed in 2015 among partners working in the housing, health, and justice systems and with people with lived experience. The COI released their report, Close Quarters, Challenges and Opportunities in Stabilizing Housing and Mental Health Across the Justice Sector in February of this year. And it examines issues faced by people whose needs are at the intersection of housing, mental health, and justice involvement and makes related recommendations. And the HSJCC was brought on because of our expertise, uh, and the Secretariat informed the release and, and design of this report. It aligns with the priorities for the network as well. Housing was the top priority identified, um, and this is cross-sectoral collaboration and cooperation. The work of this COI and the report will inform uh, the HSJCC network's future projects related to housing. 
The interstate theme became involved uh, with the racialized populations and mental health and addiction boy in their latest project, which looked at how racialized populations were accessing or not accessing mental health support diversion. Uh, the COI held a think tank day in January 2019 and released their report, Racialized Populations and Mental Health Court Diversion, in May. The report examines how diversion is applied to racialized populations, the need for race-based data collection, and how to improve the well-being of racialized populations in the justice system. This really aligns with the network's priorities around special populations and cross-sectoral collaboration. Uh, and you can find a webinar on the HSJCC website. So looking ahead, uh, the HSJCC has recently become involved with a new project on survivors of homicide violence and mental health. Family members and friends of victims of homicide violence face unique challenges, but research has historically focused on perpetrators and victims. This project aims to enhance awareness of the needs of family members and friends of survivors of homicide, identify existing services, profile promising practices, and determine where culturally relevant responses are needed across the province. The provincial HSDCC was asked to participate given our broad membership and expertise within the network. The Project Advisory Committee recently created a survey for service providers, and the link is there on your slide. Um, again, this project aligns with our uh, priority on special populations, and you can hear more about this project at the Provincial HSBCC Conference. The Provincial HSBCC helped to establish the Collaborative Crisis Response Model Provincial Working Group, an increasing number of teams composed of mental health and addiction professionals sorry, and police are working to support persons in crisis. Uh, these are sometimes known as mobile crisis teams. However, there is little research on the outcomes of these models, a lack of consistent funding across the province, and a lack of awareness of where these teams exist. So a provincial working group was formed uh, with all of these partners to review and analyze promising practices and create a geo geographically and culturally sensitive framework and toolkit to support further development and consistent funding for these models, something similar perhaps to the police hospital transition framework. This is another great example of cross-sectoral collaboration and cooperation, and you can hear more at the Provincial HSBCC conference. Thanks. Over to Tasha. Thanks. Thanks, Christine. Um, so I'm going to be talking a bit about our communications, knowledge exchange, and member engagement activities from the past year. So a lot of the work that we do in support of the provincial table, as well as the network, involves managing resources and carrying out activities that are really aimed to facilitate a better flow of information, exchange of information and knowledge and best practices, and also fostering a greater sense of connection and collaboration between our members. So all of our communications and knowledge exchange activities are overseen by a CKE committee, um, which is made up of members from across the network um, who meet on a monthly or bi-monthly basis to provide some direction to our activities. Um, this is a committee that's always looking for new members if you're interested in joining, um, and they're very valuable in terms of providing some direction and input to really represent the interests of our very diverse network. Um, so all of these activities, again, are aimed to increase our communication, connection, and collaboration within the network. And we really see a lot all of these activities as resources that we'd like to make available to our members from across the network. Um, so these are things like our HSJCC website, which we see as a huge resource. Um, it features archives of all of our webinars, newsletters, uh, there's an event calendar. Um, as well as a, a resource library that's made up of a lot many um, academic resources. All of our local, regional, and com provincial committees also have committee pages on this website where they can upload their own documentation as well. So we encourage our members to really make use of the website. Uh, we also have our monthly webinars, which are um, aimed at focusing on projects and issues that are of interest to our members from across the province. We put out a bi-monthly newsletter, which features updates um, the provincial table, local and regional tables, as well as uh, other partner stakeholders. And of course, we have our HSJCC mailing list, 
So that is how you can find out about a lot of these activities. Um, our mailing list is, um, I think, over 1,600 people now, and uh, it's how we communicate um, uh, you know, new updates about projects as well as webinars and our newsletters. So that's something that we really like to encourage our members to make sure that you're signed up for. Um, and then we also provide some support in the area of member engagement, which I'm going to talk about uh, soon. And we support the work, or support the planning and the promotion of the Provincial Asia Safety Seed Conference. So our, our network member engagement plan has been a big project for us over the past couple of years. Um, it's, um, the purpose of the project has been to improve the engagement of HSJCC members within their committees as well as within the network at large. Um, and so this has been a project that began uh, in 2015. And in 2017, we released uh, the member engagement plan document, which contains uh, a number of strategies which are designed to help improve member engagement and address some of the challenges that committees were facing across the province. So since its release, the HSJCC Secretariat has been working with a number of committees one-on-one -on -one to continue um, supporting them in terms of their member engagement work and addressing some of the challenges that they continue to face. Since our network is made up of volunteer professionals from across the province, uh, we know that um, member engagement, communication, participation are some pretty ongoing challenges. So we're really committed to working with chairs moving forward to help them address these. So some of the activities that we've done over the past year um, have involved um, attending meetings for a number of different regional committees. Um, so presenting on the work of the HSBCC network and the provincial committee, talking a bit more about who the secretary who we are as the Secretariat and how we can better support the committee. Um, another big activity for us has been the development of um, facilitated workshops or member engagement events. Um, so these are half or full day events that have involved a number of activities and facilitated discussions aimed at identifying the unique challenges that committees face and um, trying to come up with solutions together to address some of these challenges. So through, we've had about five of these um, workshops over the past couple of years. And through these ongoing consultations, there have been a number of, um, I guess, key themes that have come up and some strat interesting strategies and best practices that we've heard from committees. So I wanted to go through a couple of these um, and hopefully give um, you know, our members some ideas of some of uh, what these member engagement events actually look like and um, some strategies to help you guys address any challenges you might be facing. So some of the key themes that have come up during our discussions are things like a lack of clear vision um, or understanding of what the purpose of your table is. Um, so we know that with a lot of turnover um, in our committees, there's often a number of members who are arriving who don't really have a great idea of what exactly they're doing there and what the overall purpose is. So some of the strategies that we have heard and best practices are things like um, undergoing activities that can help you refresh your vision statement. So we know that a lot of committees might not even be aware of what their current vision statement is or it might be out of date. So taking some time to revisit that vision statement and make sure that all of your committees, committee members are aware um, of that statement. Uh, another common theme we've heard has been uh, linkages. So that's kind of a lack of awareness uh, or connection with other committees within the network. So that could be between the regional and local level or um, those committees and the provincial people. And that can affect your work in a lot of ways. So, you know, a lack of um, a sense of direction in terms of your project work. Um, linkages can also help with coming up with innovative solutions to mutual problems that you're facing. And it can also provide um, opportunities for collaboration. So some strategies that we've heard around addressing this issue are um, things like making sure that you have representatives sitting at all of the different levels of these uh, committees and are really being intentional about um, making sure information is communicated between these different tables. 
so providing updates at the local, regional, and provincial level, um, and also making use of our newsletters, our mailing lists, and the provincial highlights documents that we send out. Um, another common theme that has come up quite a lot in our discussions has been um, committee structures. So a lack of awareness around um, how your committees should really be operating. Um, so things like how the meetings should be structured, uh, membership responsibilities, and um, working with a work plan. So some of the strategies, I think one of the big things we, that we talk about a lot in these engagement sessions is making sure that you are reviewing your terms of reference on a pretty regular basis and making sure that it's really up to date and that uh, members are really aware of what it contains um, and making sure it really reflects your current membership. Um, we've also heard some interesting strategies around the idea of around um, how your meeting should be structured. So some things like having a consent agenda or um, structuring your update section of your meeting um, just to make sure that people's time is being used appropriately and that everyone has the opportunity to really provide some input. Um, another interesting strategy we've heard about a lot has been the creation of some orientation materials. So we've heard that you know, it's not uncommon for new members to be arriving to meetings without a great idea of um, what their responsibilities are or really what they're doing there. So we can, we, we're thinking that orientation materials can help provide some background as well as clarify some of those responsibilities. Um, another big theme that's come up in terms of member engagement work has been accountability. Um, so it's, we've heard quite a bit that often a lot of the work uh, involved in, in maintaining these committees can fall to one or two people, usually the chairs or co-chairs. And so a lot of our discussions have been around how can we come up with uh, ways to share some of these responsibilities. Some strategies we've heard are things like having rotating co-chairs or coming up with additional roles to help, um, you know, share some of that, those burdens, and um, as well as developing working groups that focus on specific projects. And then a last, one of the last key themes I think that have come up quite a bit is accessibility. So that's in terms of um, how people are able to access the meetings um, when it comes to things like different work schedules as well as uh, geographic issues. So we've also heard from a lot of committees about different ways that they can make use of technology in order to make their committee meetings more accessible. So, um, yeah, so in terms of member engagement moving forward, um, we're looking forward to continue working with committees to develop strategies that are really tailored to their needs. Um, so if there are any members who would like to get in touch with us to talk about what these activities can look like, please feel free to do so. Um, and I'll be reaching out in my role as mem member engagement um, support to current chairs to, um, to check in again and see how we can kind of move forward together. Um, so one, another big area of support that we've been providing is in knowledge exchange. Um, so knowledge exchange is a huge component, component of the HSJCC network and the work that we do. Uh, knowledge exchange focuses on closing the gap between knowledge and practice. So connecting people who create knowledge with decision makers and practitioners with the goal of making relevant evidence more useful in the context of practice, policy, and strategic decision making. So I think this is really relevant, especially when we think about um, some of the amazing resources that our committees are developing together um, and a lot of the knowledge and expertise that our members are bringing to the table. And so these activities are really important in terms of making sure that that information is really getting to the people who can turn it into action. Um, so uh, over the next couple of weeks, we have, will be releasing this um, HSDCC Network Knowledge Exchange Guide. This was developed um, firstly to support the provincial tables knowledge exchange activities, but we're also going to be sharing it with the regional and local tables uh, to help support your work as well. Um, so the, the guide was developed with the support from uh, the Evidence Exchange Network, and it contains <coughs> um, an overview of uh, what knowledge exchange is as a concept, discussion around different kinds of evidence, and some of the relevant stakeholders and 
strategies, but it might be available to HSACCs. Um, it also has just very helpful planning templates that can help uh, committees really work through the knowledge exchange strategies to make sure that the, this information is getting to the people that they want it to get to. Um, so it will be very helpful in terms of thinking about who your relevant stakeholders are um, and what your actual goals are in terms of knowledge exchange. So, you know, they might be some, um, more focused on raising awareness or trying to instigate some kind of behavioral change or policy action. So I think it's quite important to be um, strategic and thoughtful about how you're really releasing um, whatever resources or information that you're developing. Um, so you can look forward to that. It will be sent out to our chairs over the coming weeks. And um, we'll also be making it available on our website. And please feel free to get in touch with us if you need any more support in this area. Um, and so finally, one of our big knowledge exchange events um, that we put on is the Provincial HSDCC Conference. And so we hold this every two years, and it brings together and I think over 400 professionals from across the province in the human services and justice sectors, representatives from our HSDCCs, as well as many other organizations. We're very excited about our lineup of you know, speakers this year, as well as um, a ton of very exciting uh, concurrent sessions and keynote panels. So we really encourage everyone to make sure that you have registered. Um, the early bird uh, reduced rate is going to be ending on September 12th. So please make sure that you have signed up. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you there. We'll be there uh, for you to connect with if you would like to. So yeah, we're very excited about it. All right. So um, we have a little bit of time left for questions. So we wanted to invite everyone, if you have any questions for us, um, whether it's you know questions about something very specific or bigger picture issues, please feel free to type them into the chat box now. And while we're uh, waiting for those questions to come in, we have a couple of questions for ourselves that were just designed to kind of reflect on uh, the work that we've been doing to support the network. Um, so we're going to do a little round table now. Um, so our first question is, what are some of the common issues, concerns, or misconceptions you have heard from HSBCC members? And I'm going to turn that over to Candace. Thanks, Sasha. So I think uh, a lot of issues and misconceptions are things that you actually brought up um, during the discussion on member engagement um, and just uh, talking about some of the, the key things that have come up when traveling around to the regional and local committees. Um, so one thing is around the structure and the flexibility of the network. So as, as Joseph mentioned previously, the network has been around for 20 years and has evolved over time through several different changes to a social and social environment. And uh, one thing I want to stress is that it's always been quite flexible um, and has adapted to changes in order to optimize our efforts so that we can best meet the needs of our focus population. Um, so I would encourage committees, if they are having any challenges, um, have questions about changing their structure, any functional issues, to use the Secretariat as a resource so we can um, assist them in providing strategies for this. Um, another piece that you mentioned, uh, Tasha, was the lack of focus and clear vision for your committees. So, that's an issue, and then also knowing where the committee fits in within the network and how that aligns with the overall goals of the network um, as well as the provincial table. Um, so these issues kind of come up when you're developing your terms of reference and trying to clearly articulate goals and objectives. Um, the provincial HSJCC encourages uh, consistency of approach and messaging across the network, but also recognize that regional and local committees um, do have their own uh, specific issues in diversity. Um, so again, I would encourage everyone um, to use the Secretariat as a tool with this. We can help provide strategies and resources to ensure that consistency of approach while also tailoring uh, your documents and your resources to best meet the needs of your committee. Great, thank you. Uh, so our next question is, what is the most interesting aspect of working with the HSBCC network? So I'm going to turn it over to you, Joseph. Thanks. I actually really wanted to answer this question. Um, I find myself acting as a champion for the network quite a bit. 
And not only because it pays my bills, um, but because I think all the staff here and all the members of the network really are brought together by our desire to reduce the effects of criminalization of specialized populations. And without reinventing the wheel and the system that we provide these services through in Ontario, the HSJCC network really does provide sort of the best response that we can give within our current resources to addressing this very important challenge. And so it's really easy to champion this idea. It's also really easy to champion because it's unique. Um, we haven't really come across any other jurisdiction, certainly within Canada, that's not global, um, that really does break down silos um, for service and care coordination in such an effective way and in such a way that sort of minimizes resources. Um, so I think that's something that we really celebrate um, and certainly try and cross-pollinate when we talk with stakeholders in other jurisdictions. Uh, there's a lot of interest around uh, how the HSJC network works and how it can be spread um, to other jurisdictions. Anecdotally, too, um, I teach on the side uh, some courses at Humber College uh, in their community justice services program. And uh, these are obviously the HSJC workers of tomorrow. And it's so um, fascinating and exciting and motivating to be able to share with them so many of the examples of, of the great work that's going across the network and how it actually speaks to these important issues um, and solutions for criminalization. So, um, you know, there's so many interesting aspects, but I think the best thing is, is it's really easy to be a champion of this work and um, something that the Secretary has to uh, really celebrate. Great, thank you. Um, so our next question is, what can HSJCC members look forward to over the next year? 15? Thanks, Natasha. So much. Um, first of all, uh, the Older Adults in the Justice System Navigational Guidebook uh, for service providers and caregivers is coming out very soon in the fall. Uh, we also have a series of one-page brochures planned and other knowledge exchange, acti knowledge exchange activities. So stay tuned for that. Um, the Collaborative Crisis Response Model Project, uh, that working group will be releasing their framework and toolkit. Uh, sometime in the next uh, year, so uh, that will be very exciting. Um, and as well, the Survivors of Homicide Violence Project uh, is going to, going to be developing some culturally responsive interventions for this population. So I, I'm really excited about our project work, and as well as any new projects or issues that might come up uh, throughout the year. And of course, we have our conference coming up in November. Uh, so all the projects I just mentioned are presenting in some capacity. Um, we'll also be able to hear from some local and regional committees about the work they're doing, uh, from our ministry partners, um, as well as some special presentations on Indigenous issues and race-based data collection. Um, so I'm really excited for this opportunity for the network uh, to get to interact uh, and, and meet each other. Uh, anyone want to add to that? Yeah, I want to jump in. Okay. Uh, okay. So I guess it's used to no one um, that Ontario's health system is undergoing a very fundamental transformation. Um, and I think what we're excited about is provincial HSJCC and representatives of the network as a whole is how we can leverage the strengths of the HSJCC approach and infrastructure um, to help support the system transformation. A lot of the information going out um, about Ontario Health is the need for an integrated approach to better care. And that's certainly something um, that the HSJCC lives and breathes um, as practical solutions to the criminalization issues. Um, so we're really excited to see how we can best align with the Ontario Health model um, and broader approaches to integration in general. So I think that's a really exciting opportunity for the HSJCC network. And uh, for myself, I'm just looking forward to um, continuing to find ways that we can support the network in terms of increasing communication and collaboration. We've had a lot of ideas and input from the communities that we've been talking to, and so we're really looking forward to finding ways to implement some of those. So some of those might look like um, some kind of an online forum featured on our website to kind of increase communication and um, development of more resources and templates for the committees to use to kind of ease the process and the administrative work that goes along with their committee work. Anything else? No. Okay. Uh, we have a couple questions here. And again, if there's any other questions anyone has for us, please um, feel free to type them into the chat box. 
Um, so uh, the first question, I am new to the committee and would like to know if I have access to the orientation package. Um, and if you want to talk about what orientation materials are available. Sure, so we, we do have a provincial HSJCC orientation package that we're currently working on adapting um, just so it's a little more user friendly uh, for the network. Um, we are encouraging individual committees though to make their own orientation packages that will obviously work better for their region and kind of provide that historical context. Um, so depending on uh, what committee uh, you've just joined, um, I would inquire with your regional chair as to whether they can provide you with an orientation. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to provide an example of what kinds of things are in an orientation package and share what we have at the provincial level. Great. Thank you. Uh, we have another question here. Um, uh, so it's just asking about financial support for transportation to the conference. Um, so I'm not sure if anyone would want to kind of clarify whether there's financial support involved with that or... Yeah, typically regional HSJCCs will set aside funds for their members to join the HSJCC conference. Um, we don't have any independent funds specifically, um, but certainly we encourage all of our members to make sure that um, they do have some funds set aside to attend the conference because it really is um, just the biggest knowledge exchange event that we host, and it's such a celebration of all the unique work that we do. Great. Um, so another question here, uh, referencing uh, the present a presentation that was held at the provincial table in January on community safety and well-being planning, um, the initiative led by Soldrin, and it seems to touch on a number of themes that overlap uh, with what we are trying to achieve with the network. So just wondering whether there is any movement in informing the region and local tables about this or having the provincial table engage with the Solgen team to explore opportunities for collaboration. Um, anyone want to speak to this? Um, yeah, I, um, from what we heard uh, at that provincial uh, session, a number of communities are already engaging uh, and creating these safety plans. Um, so I think this might be something to take back to your local and regional committee uh, to see if it's happening at a local level. Um, yeah, the safety plans um, are, aren't happening at, at a provincial level, so uh, that was more an information session for all of us uh, just to hear what was going on. But yeah, it sounded like a lot of the regionals were involved. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe the presenters um, did say that they would be available if regional and local committees were interested in having presentations um, to their communities and trying to connect the piece between community safety planning and what the work with HSGCC are already doing. Yeah. And I, I believe they also um, did a webinar on the community safety, similar to the one that was presented at the provincial table. So I think there is some opportunity for connection with those presenters as well. Um, any other questions from the network? Okay. Um, great. Well, I think then that I think that's all of the questions that we have for today. So uh, I'll just put our contact information up here and just encourage everyone to feel free to get in touch with us if you have any questions about anything we talked about today. Um, and of course, uh, visit our website and join the mailing list to make sure you're in the loop. You can also follow us on Twitter. Um, and just really wanted to thank everyone so much, uh, first of all, for joining us today, but also as members of the network for all of the amazing work that you do and for helping us make sure that this network is a success. So um, thank you again. Thanks for my team for joining us today, and uh, have a great afternoon.